How's it going team? This is Eddie Gray. Welcome to the channel resources for the modern creative where we help you become a Logic Pro power user. In this installment, we will be finding your Logic profiles. This is dedicated to Armando Ponce Garcia. He says, my problem is this. I recorded a song, but I must have saved it under a different project name. Cannot find the project or the song. Any ideas? Thanks. All right. So the first thing I'll recommend when you are working with a situation like this is to obviously use the search spotlight function. So, you know, name of song that could probably yield some good results. The other thing you might want to do is go into the Apple window top left, go into recent items. Maybe you have it documented here. Something else to consider is to highlight the Logic Pro icon in the dock, control click it, and you will also have some recent items here. I hope that helps. Usually these files, just by default, they are sent to a specific file path. So we should look at that. And that's going to be music logic. So for anybody that has saved a file, you don't know where it went. Most likely it went here. Your computer, users, your name, music. All right, let's look for the rest of your files. The next thing that comes up with Logic users indubitably are the Apple loops. Where are the Apple loops? And more importantly, where are my user loops? Before I show you where they are, I'm going to recommend that you go up into the finder window and you open up your preferences and you allow your hard disk to show up on your desktop. You can also simply hit command T and that will bring up a window. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna go into library, audio, Apple loops. These are all of the loops that you are going to find within the Apple loop browser. So if I click here, you can see we've got the new and improved artist loops, right? The new 808s, all this good stuff. I also have my loops. So be sure to choose all packs at the very top up here within your loop packs so you're not running around in circles. So what's important to understand is you have Apple loops, you have untagged, and you also have your own user loops. So that needs to be clarified. So if I go back to this screen, this is where the Apple loops are. Let's clarify where the other loops are. You can see here at the top, I have my user loops, right? It says single files. Here's the 808 destruction kit. So if I go back to logic and I click on my loops, if I go to the very top, you can see this is where these are located. If I ever wanted to delete one of those, I could simply just delete it from this menu, go back into logic and re-index so I don't have any loops that are dimmed. In order to do that, you click on the up and down arrow menu, go to the very bottom of the screen and re-index all loops. Your untagged loops, which are different from user loops, can be found right here under users, chameleon eight, your name, music, audio music apps, untagged loops. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. Make sure you take a screenshot of these two if you're looking for either your own loops that you've dragged into the loop browser, or if you're looking for untagged loops. And how do you create untagged loops? Well, let's say I open up a drive of my favorite samples and I wanna drag these into Logic. If you simply click, hold and drag, you can commence creating untagged loops. I have other videos on the subject. If you wanna check it out, go ahead. So just to reiterate, we have all packs, user loops, and then on top we have untagged loops. The difference being, if you drag a loop from inside of a Logic Pro session, that becomes a user loop. That becomes something that is dropped into the My Loops section here. Untagged loops are different in that you're dragging from outside of the DAW. All right, let's find some more of your files. Next on the list are impulse responses. This is very important to note simply because you might start getting a bit deeper into sound design 
and you might want to start to experiment a little bit more with using just your own sounds not just presets so where do we find impulse response well the easiest way to do it honestly is to open up space designer click not on the preset menu up here but the up and down arrow menu and you want to show in finder you look at this file path i'm going to command click here you can see it also if we zoom in a little bit tighter you can see that under mac hd library audio impulse responses we find what we need to find here now this is very important to understand we don't necessarily just have to use the presets provided for logic on top of that we don't even have to just use the impulse responses provided by space designer if you would like you can go ahead and drag in third party offerings and you can load those instead of the normal impulse responses that are provided solely by logic so this is really nice that you can do something like this check that out let's move on to the next file now something i recommend before we move on is that you use the max tagging system i particularly like purple for all audio settings so if there's any relevant folder you can see that i've tagged it here so that rather than having to go through all the hoopla of trying to find something or use spotlight all i gotta do is hover to the bottom left of the sidebar click on purple and all the files are going to be there so we're going to cover patches next related to channel strip settings let's go through the distinction first and then i'll show you the file paths so this is an instrument right and if i then hover above the channel strip and save it you can see that i can save this as a channel strip setting there is another way to save though and you should be aware of how that works if i go into the library and if i save in the bottom left corner here you can see that i'm no longer saving as a cst file but i'm saving under a dot patch file and so that's where the difference lies we need to understand the difference between channel strip settings when working with logic pro and patches so channel strip settings is the old method of saving we've got patches the new method of saving and there's a lot of differentiation between these two but here you go here are the file paths in case you need to find them under mac hd users your name music audio music apps now why on earth would you need to find these well let's say i don't know maybe you misspell something like you are saving a bass or a piano or something and you just happen to mess up the spelling well this will cover you so i'm going to go ahead and just save this and i'll just spell the word test and add a couple t's at the very end. so if i want to delete the file that's fine all i got to do is click right here and that will delete that specific user patch the problem is is i don't want to delete it i simply want to fix the spelling so all i got to do is go here fix the spelling hit return go back into logic pro close the library key command y open it back up if i go into user patches you will see that that has been rectified but let me actually go ahead and delete this now so i can show you how that works i'm going to click on delete you can see that it no longer is there and if i go back into this menu you can see that it is also no longer here so that's how that works we've got patches we've got channel strips let's go to the next one all right so let's look for plugin settings so something to be clear about with logic is that sometimes you're going to find two file paths for the same name so you've got plugin settings here we've got plugin settings here one of them is dedicated to logic you can see here it says mac hd library application support logic the one on the left are my user presets so if you ever create user presets this is where you will find them mac users your name music audio music apps so i'm going to go ahead and show you that file path here all right now, when I go through this folder, you're going to find all the plugins inside of your system. And if you've ever created any user presets, this is where you'll be able to either delete them, edit them, save them. Let's go into stereo delay. 
and when I click in this down arrow menu, you can see that these are user presets. Now, if I create another one, let's just call this test again. If I go back into that menu, you can see that it is right there. Again, we can update the text or what have you. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. I don't need it. Let's go back here. And as soon as I update this, you'll see that it will no longer be available. So just be aware that the files that come with Logic are going to differ from the presets that you create as a Logic user. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Where Are My Logic Files. If you want to support the channel, please go ahead and check out the links in the description. I will be making a part two on this series if there are specific file paths that you want to know about. You've always been curious, but alas, you have never found them. Let's do the work together and we will find all the files necessary to get you back up and running. This is Eddie Gray signing off. Thank you so very much for all the comments, likes, all the shares. Really couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you so much. Let's stay up, let's stay happy, let's stay focused on what we want. Let's keep pushing the envelope and I will catch you on the next one. Take good care. See you next time.